Hello everyone! Today's video is going to be uh, something that I've actually been putting off for quite a while. It's an anxiety Q&A. Uh, I've actually been putting it off because my anxiety has been so high and I personally find sometimes talking about anxiety actually makes me more stressed and anxious. As you can see, I'm like already like fiddling around with my collar. Um, but sometimes it makes me feel better to talk about it. And I'm actually having a moment now today where I feel pretty good. So I thought I would do it. I asked you guys for questions and I got so many questions on Instagram and I'm not going to be able to answer everything, but, um, I'm going to answer some. So here we go. Um, what are you anxious about? Hopefully it's not anxiety for no reason. Well, sadly, it kind of is and it isn't. I feel like I am starting to understand my triggers a little bit better and um, people with anxiety will understand that. I mean, when I first started getting anxiety, which for those of you who don't know, I was very young. I was probably like a, a preteen, I would say, if not a yeah, I would say I was like a teenager when I really started to like get anxiety and I had like anxiety attacks. Um, but I don't have panic attacks so much anymore, but I basically just experienced that like tightness in my chest and like just like an anxious feeling. Um, now I get it because I am easily stressed. Um, I have a decent amount of stress in my life, I feel like, which is more personal stress that I don't want to get into right now. But um I think, yeah, I, I do get anxious sometimes for no reason. Also, like, I have a lot of anxiety when things aren't in their place. And right now I'm obviously, like, putting my flat back together after, like, redoing the floors and this and that. So I'm currently, like, in a state of, like, limbo, which gives me a lot of anxiety. So that's one reason. Um, but yeah, like, sometimes I get anxious for no reason. Sometimes it's around social events. Sometimes it's... You know, it really varies from day to day. Um, so yeah. Any natural remedies you do to calm down? Well, um, I'll tell you one thing. I've stopped drinking coffee, um, which is sad, seriously, because I love coffee. Um, but it gives me like actual heart palpitations, like for real. And I also don't know if this is true, but I feel like when I drink coffee, it makes me spike like this. Whereas if I drink tea, it's a more rounded kind of thing. Um, I do need help to like stay awake in the day. So I cannot live without my tea. And for the longest time now, I've been drinking coffee, but it's just, it does not agree with me. And I've had to pretty much say goodbye to it. I mean, sometimes I'll have one um, if I'm having like a good day, but I'm for the most part staying away. But any natural remedies? Um, I'm getting more into CBD. So um, I'm actually, I've been taking CBD drops and I've been putting like oil and stuff on my skin. Um, but I am waiting currently right now in the mail for my CBD vape pen um, because I've heard so many amazing things about it. And yeah, let me guys know if you guys vape CBD or take CBD because it's something that I think is gonna help me so much. How to avoid social anxiety. Well, it, can the answer be don't do anything social? Because that's pretty much where I'm at right now. <laughs> Bad advice. I I basically only do social events that I feel comfortable with right now because that's just kind of like the state of me. I've stopped going out, really. I'm not really partying anymore. I'm not, I was going to say I'm not drinking that much anymore, but that's a lie. That's a lie. Um, <laughs> but I'm not like going out and like doing shots these days anymore, for instance. But I do enjoy a glass or two of wine. But I now like know my limits more. Like I'll probably have like two or three glasses of wine. That's it. That's my cutoff point these days. Um, don't know why I'm confessing this right now. How to avoid social anxiety. Oh yeah, because I think drinking can sometimes also exacerbate my anxiety, not in the moment, but definitely after. Um, so I've been kind of trying to avoid that. Um, but I think just in general, socially, I just try to go into social situations as like, well, this is a social thing and everybody's here to have a good time. And 
I'm just going to go and just be myself. And if it becomes too much, I can just go take a minute to myself, like, and go breathe if I really need to. Um, But social situations, I feel like, I feel like if it's with my good friends, I don't get anxiety about them. It's more like work social situations. So if it was like an evening event, like I just don't go. Like I just can't go because it will stress me out the entire day knowing that I have to go to like a work dinner or something like that with like socializing and stuff for like four hours. Like that for some reason like really, really kills me. Um, So yeah, I've been kind of just like avoiding that and only going to social things that I feel like are good for me, you know, and, and the more of those I do, I feel like the more I'm getting comfortable, like going back in. Also, my social anxiety is like this. Sometimes I'm like the most social butterfly and other times I'm like a hermit. So I think with anything, it's like important to listen to your body and, and kind of go from there. How do you stop yourself from having a full blown anxiety attack before an important meeting? Well, I actually don't get panic attacks that much anymore. Knock on bamboo. I really feel for those people who do because they are terrifying and they're so scary and they're just really not fun. But I really think breathing is such an important thing. I know for me, whenever I'm like, I sometimes get to the point where I feel like I could have a panic attack. It basically feels like such a tight feeling in my chest. Like right now, I even have it a little bit where you almost feel like your full inhale is still just like half an inhale. So like I feel like it's just hard to breathe in sometimes. And that's when you kind of start like breathing really quickly. And then the whole thing kind of goes to shit from there. Um, That's why yoga has been so helpful to me just breathing. Um, Yoga is a practice of breathing and it's helped me so much. Um, But if you're like in the moment right before something and you are about to like go down with a panic attack, I think honestly, try to get yourself alone, even if it's like a bathroom stall and inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So I will like inhale for two breaths and exhale for two breaths and inhale for three and exhale for three. And I'll do that sometimes all the way up to like 10 and then I'll do it again. Like that sometimes really helps me. And most of the time I feel like after a couple minutes of that, the feeling kind of starts to subside. Hi, Stay, I wanted to know if you use any essential oils to help your anxiety. Well, I have a diffuser at home. I'm gonna link to it down below because it's so beautiful and people always ask me. I think the brand is Vitruvi. And I put a lot of oils in it. Sometimes like if I'm working, I'll put like eucalyptus or I'll put like, you know, I have like loads of like oils and stuff, peppermint. And you can really just like research what oils do what to you. Um, Uplifting oils, relaxing oils. I personally love it. Like this morning I woke up and my flat was just like such a mess and like I've got stuff in boxes and stuff. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna put that diffuser on and have my tea and just stand here for a minute. And it actually really, really helped. I also love baths. So I use a lot of bath oils and I honestly could make a whole freaking video about baths, which I might. I'm, I'm gonna do an IGTV about my bath routine, so stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, I do really like essential oils and I love candles. Um, so yeah, I do, I do use them. Have you tried weed as a means of calming your nerves? So I actually mentioned this in a podcast I did with uh, the co-founders of The Chillery, which is a European destination to buy CBD. And I was saying that, you know, during some of my most anxious times, I have turned to weed, you know, smoke a joint or something before bed to help me fall asleep. This does not help me fall asleep, though. I don't even know if I'm like legally allowed to say that I've I've done that. Hmm. (laughs) I think it should be fine. It's in the past. It's in the past. I can't smoke weed because it it's honestly, it makes me just, my brother calls it hamster wheeling. I am like a hamster on a wheel in my brain, like thinking about all of my problems. So I can't smoke weed anymore. And I said, mentioned this in my podcast with the co-founders of the Chillery. And they were basically talking about how CBD is going to give me the effects um, that I wanted to get from weed, but without all of those, like, you know, the mind high 
so that's good I, I know it works a lot for a lot of people and I'm I'm like all for it it's just for me personally it doesn't work but um yeah does your anxiety affect your relationships when mine is high my relationships go downhill that's actually a question that I'm so glad somebody asked because it really can affect relationships and especially if a person that you're in a relationship with or a friendship with doesn't understand um, your mental health because it's not easy to explain to someone, you know? So I think, it ha it ha to answer the question, yes, it has affected some of my relationships, especially if I'm like bailing last minute because I feel like I can't do something or... You know, I'm not I'm non-committal because I'm like, I just don't want to commit to that right now because it's stressful for me. I think the best thing that I've learned is to be open with someone that I'm having a particularly stressful day or that I can't commit to something, um, but I really want to go and like, can I let them know sooner, closer to the time? You know, I think that's the most important thing is just being open about what's going on so that the other person can understand and like isn't just like oh well a stay is just bailing last minute because like she thinks she's too cool to come to this dinner or whatever it is like it's not like that so I try my best to explain that um it's not that I don't want to come it's sometimes that I can't come is your anxiety better when you're home in Canada it actually is. Um, I love going home to Canada. And I think that's because like I leave all my responsibilities and all of my big to-do lists here in London and I go home and my mom like makes me lasagna and puts blankets on me when I'm napping. So of course my anxiety is less. My stress levels go down. Um, that's why it's so important to get away. So yes, they are they are lower, but I always think like if I moved home to Canada, which I have no plans of currently, um, you know, you can't run away from your problems, but you can for a couple of days. Have you thought about taking medication for your anxiety? Um, I've mentioned this before. I've actually been on um, antidepressants for, um, I would want to say like five years or something like that. And I know depression is separate from anxiety, but for me, they're very tied. And um, sometimes my depression is higher than my anxiety. And sometimes my anxiety is higher than my depression. And sometimes they're both just like, you know, equally as bad. And sometimes I feel great. Um, but for me personally, I feel like that's something that's helpful to me. And I know that not everybody wants to take medication, which is totally fair. Again, listen to yourself. I just know for me, and I've tried so many things, a, a low dose of medication helps me um, function, which I need to be able to do, um, obviously. So for me, that's working. I've come off them before, bad times. Um, or well, it's good for the first little bit, then it gets really bad. And I just, I'm not in a position right now in my life where I want to risk that. Um, I don't, yeah. So what was the question? Oh yeah. So I do take medication and I think there's a big stigma around taking medication for depression and anxiety. And it's really frustrating to me because it's something that's helped me immensely. I went from really not being able to live my day-to-day -day life to being able to. Um, and for me, that is huge. So I think if if you're someone who is struggling to that degree, it's definitely something to look into. Of course, there are lots of holistic and other ways to go about it, but I don't think there should be any shame in taking medication. And that's why I speak about it quite openly because it's, for me, something that I don't want to be without right now. Maybe not forever, but right now. So somebody's like, no question, but I just hope it gets better. Thank you. Sadly, it's something that I feel like I'm learning to live with, which is not ideal, <laughs> but I'm finding such amazing coping mechanisms that work for me personally. And I'm, like I said earlier in the video, I'm finding things that are kind of triggering me. So I'm trying to avoid those things. Um, it does go up and down. So if you're watching this and you're in a particularly high anxiety point, I feel for you so much because it just can be so suffocating. But I always try to remember that it's not going to go on like this 
forever. Uh, might be a little longer than you're used to, but eventually, you know, it's going to kind of level out, hopefully. But I think talking about it with your friends and your family helps so much. Um, when I said earlier in the video that I find talking about it is sometimes stressful, I think I meant more like talking about it online because it's such a vulnerable thing, especially if you're going through it. Um, but ultimately, I think it's very important to talk about it in a safe space. Um, yeah, like last night, for instance, I called my mom and I was like, I'm just feeling so overwhelmed. And that in itself isn't anxiety, but when I feel steadily overwhelmed, that's kind of when I get into the trouble zone. So honestly, just talking to my mom for like 35 minutes about what was kind of overwhelming me, it just feels like a bit of an exhale, which is really great. There are a lot of questions um, about how do you do something that you know um, is anxiety inducing for you, for instance, like a social situation. Um, I think it's very important to get out of your comfort zone, like completely. If I didn't get out of my comfort zone, I would probably never leave this bedroom. So, um, it is important to push yourself, but also know your limits. Um, sometimes I just tell myself, just get to that thing, get to that event and assess it there. I think with anxiety, so much of it is just not being in the present moment. You're thinking about what might happen in the future, or what has happened in the past. You're not really being present, um, which is so much easier said than done. I'm actually doing a meditation course in a couple of weeks, um, so I'm hoping that's really going to help me. But I always think, and my mom says this to me all the time, just do one thing at a time. Just, if you're gonna make a to-do list, just do one thing at, the, at a time. Don't think about the big picture. Don't think about what you have to do in six months. Think about what you have to do today, which is so hard for me, especially when I look at my calendar and I have like four months of things that I'm like, every day I know I have to do that thing in like three months time. That is so stressful for, for me. Um, but if I just look at the day, I'm like, okay, so today I need to do this thing, this thing, and this thing. Okay, that's not so bad. And then you go to sleep and then you wake up the next day. Okay, today I can do this. So that is a really helpful tip for me is just being more present. And that goes with like going to a, something, an event or something. It's like, get to the event, see how you feel. If it's too much, you can leave. If it's okay, great. Go like minute to minute to minute. Do you ever feel guilty for being an inconvenience with anxiety because I do? That is a great question and it's something that I speak about with one of my closest friends all the time. It's like feeling like you're annoying people or feeling like, yeah, you're just like being a nuisance to somebody. That is so hard and it's like nobody wants to make, nobody wants to feel like they're, being an inconvenience to other people, obviously. And that is such an anxiety trigger in itself. But I do think it goes back to just explaining, you know, and speaking to your friends and family about it. Hopefully they're gonna be understanding. I know not everybody is, but hopefully, you know, people are getting it. And I think because people are talking about anxiety more, I think people are kind of getting the picture. And also we're living in a world where so many people have anxiety, you know, so many people are stressed out. So many people are beginning to understand mental health more. So I think just talking about it really helps you not feel like, you know, a, a nuisance. And remember that your feelings matter. You shouldn't put yourself in a situation where it's extremely stressful for you just so you're going to make other people comfortable. I mean, own yourself and just know that you are allowed to feel those feelings. I think that's something that helped me too. Do you find therapy helps? Um, I am currently not in therapy. It's not something I'm personally looking to do right now. I would love to do it in the future. I talk about this a lot on my podcast, but right now, no, I think it's amazing. I think therapy can help in so many different ways, but it's not something I'm currently doing right now. How do you motivate yourself to go out and do things when you're super anxious? Um, so, I'm going to use the example of working out. Um, I find working out sometimes to be very stressful. Um, going to the gym and or going to a class besides yoga is sometimes 
very anxiety inducing for me. And I think it probably stems back to my childhood or something. But I, if I'm going to do like, you know, I don't know, a co-box class or something to actually get me there is actually very stressful for me. It's not as simple as, oh, I don't feel like working out today. It's actually like I get nervous um, beforehand thinking I'm not going to be able to complete this class. I'm not going to be able to keep up with everybody else. I'm not going to be able to do, I'm, you know, these are just like the anxious thoughts that come through my mind. Now, as soon as I get there, I feel pumped. I feel good. It's a welcoming environment. And I always just try to remind myself it's going to be a welcoming environment. Everything's going to be okay. What's the worst that could happen? Okay, you can only do 20 jumping jacks, not 50 or something like that. You know, I always try to think of what is the worst that could happen? Okay, that's not so bad. Cool. Um, and also exercise helps me so much. And I always try to tell myself that it's more of a mental thing for me. It's like trying to remember that feeling I get after a workout where I'm like, oh, I should really do this more <laughs> because it helps me so much. Okay, I think that's it from me. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and leave me loads of comments down below. I'm definitely going to check out the comments and try to respond to as many as I can. Um, and check out the description box as well because I'm going to link to a few podcast episodes where my guests and I talk about anxiety. So that could be helpful to you. And yeah, that's everything. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.